Hello guys, welcome back to the Kilohertz Mercedes channel and I hope you're safe and well. This video is gonna be another how-to where I show you exactly how you swap and replace the wing mirror housing on your post 2008 model Mercedes. So that covers all models from the A-Class up to the G-Wagon which use this style. If you have a more up-to-date or current model of Mercedes with slightly rounder mirrors, click on my link which is up here where I go through exactly the same process in detail in that video. Anyway, just before we start up, have you actually subscribed to the channel? Now we're approaching 50,000 subscribers and looking at my stats, the vast majority of people aren't actually subscribed who watch it. And it's completely free and it does help the channel grow. So click on that subscribe button so you're notified whenever I upload any videos, etc. So let's get started. So before we start, let's make sure you have the correct tools available for the job. I thoroughly recommend that you get yourself a set of plastic trim removal tools. These will ensure that you don't do any permanent damage to any of the surrounding trim, bodywork or fittings. Now you can use screwdrivers instead to do this job but I strongly recommend against this and only using them as a last resort. You'll also need a T10 Torx bit to undo the inner screws if you need to remove the indicator lens from the surround. To start removing the mirror housing, first you need to remove the actual mirror glass. The easiest method to do this is by holding and pushing the glass forward towards the front of the car from the top corner. This will in turn move the bottom corner towards you, offering you enough space to fit the plastic trim removal tool inside so you can pull the glass out towards you. You'll see that the glass is only held in place via a number of tabs arranged in a disc shape. Next use the plastic trim removal tool again to unclip the white power cable clip. You do this by using it to press down on the tiny tab that locks it into place. Now pull the connector down to release. Move on to the two black power connectors above. Carefully pull the cables off the connectors this can be tricky to disconnect if the connector has any corrosion. Once all the cables have been disconnected, the mirror should come free. Now it's time to remove the mirror unit surround. This requires some strength and a bit of brute force. Place your fingers into the unit from the top edge and simply pull upwards. Now this will feel very unnatural and like you're about to break it, but don't worry, keep pulling upwards until it snaps free. With the mirror surrounds removed from the car, I'll now show you how to remove the integrated indicator unit, which is held in place by a couple of T10 Torx bits. Unscrew both of the T10s and keep them in a safe place. If you're swapping out the indicators for dynamic or sequential indicators, check out my other how-to video where I detail this process in full. With them removed, carefully push out the lens into the main body of the surround. You'll notice that the end clip is hooked or wedged into place. Pivot the lens around until it's free. On some units this is also held in with trim tape, so bear that in mind if it's a struggle to set it free. Refitting is basically the exact same process but in reverse with the trickiest part being the repositioning of the end clip, which you need to carefully refit into the mirror surround. Once in place, remember to screw back the T10 screws once again. Now it's time to reinstall the mirror surround back onto the car. The most important thing to note 
is the black indicator connector needs to fit into this blue plug which is on the car. Otherwise all power mirror functions such as the heated element, the mirror adjustment as well as the indicator will not work. Make sure that both the plugs connect together before you actually push down the surround. With the connectors joined, work your way around the surround pressing downwards until you hear it click fully into place. Next, carefully reattach the actual mirror, first by reconnecting the larger white connector, then the two power cables into the pins which protrude out of the mirror. The polarity doesn't seem to be affected by these, so you can attach either cable to each pin and it'll still work. With all the mirror cables attached, carefully align the large plastic disc with its counterpart on the back of the glass and press it into place until you feel it securely click. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it and you found it helpful, please click on that like button, which does help the channel grow. And if you haven't done already, consider clicking on that subscribe button with the bell icon so you're notified as soon as uploading new videos and content. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, cheers.